Hey guys, it's Alex and I'm here with a review for the last book I read, which is one of those hideous books where the mother dies by Sonia Sones. This is a young adult contemporary novel written in verse about a teenage girl whose mother has just died and she has to move to Los Angeles across the country to live with her father who she's never met before, who's a movie star. As as ridiculous and almost kind of stupid as this story seems, I honestly really love this book. I read this for the first time when I was in high school. It was one of those books I just randomly pulled off the shelf at the library and thought this sounds not like my kind of thing. I don't usually read books about girls who find out their fathers are movie stars and are suddenly living in Los Angeles with Cameron Diaz as their next door neighbor running into Johnny Depp on the street. But there's something about this one that's so utterly charming. Ruby is 15 and her mother has just died from a long illness that is assumed to be cancer or something similar to cancer. I don't believe it's ever explicitly stated in the story. She has to go live with her father who is a big movie star who she's never met. So she's obviously quite bitter about it. And she has one of the best voices that I've ever read in contemporary YA. She sounds like a 15 year old an incredibly bratty, immature 15-year-old, but it works. The Princess Diaries is an easy one to compare to this book because it has a similar sort of plot in that a girl finds out she's a princess and suddenly has to learn princessy things. This girl has to live with her movie star father. They have a similar voice in that they both have the immature teenage voice, and they're both written in sort of a quasi-diary form. The Princess Diaries is a literal diary, and this is written in verse, but it sort of comes off across very much like a diary. And it also includes emails to and from her best friend, boyfriend, and mother. But where I don't think Princess Diaries translates well to an adult audience, even if you find the story charming, the voice in Princess Diaries has always irritated me. Even as I was turning 15 and 16, I just couldn't stand to listen to Mia rant about her life. But in this book, I feel like the bratty, immature teenager voice works a whole lot better. You still have to be able to deal with that kind of thing. If you're not someone who can handle a bratty, immature 15 year old, this book is very much not for you. But if you can handle that kind of thing, I think it's a lot more charming in this book, partially because there is an element of self-awareness in this that The Princess Diaries doesn't have. I feel like the author is much more aware that Ruby's a bratty, immature teenager than Meg Cabot was. I never got the feeling that The Princess Diaries was at all self-aware. The best example I have to illustrate this is just that at one point in this book, Ruby makes a joke to her father and her father laughs. And when he laughs, she feels irritated because, as she puts it, she was trying to be snotty, not clever. And I feel like there's just that small hint of self-awareness that makes the story much more palatable. And the other reason I feel like the voice works a lot better than The Princess Diaries is because it feels like Ruby has earned her brattiness. She's a 15-year-old girl whose mother has just died. She's had to move 3,000 miles across the country. She was an East Coast girl who had a boyfriend and a best friend and an aunt who lived close by. And now she's living in Los Angeles with this father who's been a flake her whole life who she's never met. She's not anywhere near her best friend or her boyfriend. Her aunt is off on an archaeological dig. And it feels like if anyone has earned the right to be a snotty teenager, it's Ruby. I really can't fault her for a lot of the bratty things she does in here because she is a brat. She treats her father not like abusively, but in that snotty teenager sort of way when they're being very passive aggressive. I just relate to this. Like this was me at 13, 14, just being the snotty little kid who thinks they know everything, but really is just completely clueless about the world. And this is just so much fun to read. It is called one of those hideous books where the mother dies and the mother does die in this. She dies before the story starts and Ruby starts out the story getting on a plane to fly to Los Angeles to meet her father for the first time. And it's really sad. I don't know exactly that this book made me cry, but I was on the verge of tears for most of this book. And I'm always on the verge of tears when I read this book because this was a reread and I've read it numerous times. It's always one of those books I pick up 
for a quick read. It makes me want to cry my eyes out, but I never get to the point of actually crying my eyes out. I just spend the entire book about to cry and trying not to. But it's also really funny and it's hard to explain how it's so funny when it's also so heartbreaking and sad. It just has this perfect balance of I want to laugh but I'm also about to cry at the same time. I gave this book five stars. I really wasn't expecting to. I think I've given it five stars before when I've read it but I haven't read it in years and I kind of just assumed it was going to be like a really good fun read but honestly I just love this book so much. Like I had to give it five stars. Anything else was doing it an injustice. And this is only the second five star book I've read this year so that means a lot coming from me. I just I love this. I would highly recommend this to people who are fans of The Princess Diaries because I think anyone who loves The Princess Diaries would love this as well. It's also written in verse so it's a very small book anyway but because it's written in verse it's an incredibly quick read. I think I read it in about an hour and a half. If you like books that are on the younger end of young adult aimed for 13, 14 year olds instead of like 16, 17 year olds, I'd recommend picking this up. It's a really fun, really sad, but also really heartwarming book. If you like books that are more like real and down to earth, this isn't going to be the book for you. Like Cameron Diaz is literally her next door neighbor and comes over to borrow like sugar at one point to bake a cake for some other celebrity's birthday. I don't remember who. It's absurd and funny and like weird because it's so absurd and it's like this shouldn't be working as well as it does but I love it. I love this book. I will pick it up again. Like this is the kind of book that I pick up every couple of years just because I know it's so such a quick read and I know I'm going to enjoy it. But if you like The Princess Diaries read this. If you like anything that's sort of like younger YA contemporary read this. The verse is really easy to get through. It is written in verse but the verse feels more like prose than like really abstract metaphorical poetry so I don't think that's really a problem. You can just sort of read them as sentences but I love this book. I highly recommend this book. I know it's not for everyone. I can see a lot of people really hating this for the bratty teenager -y voice but I just I highly recommend. I do. Let me know down below if you've ever read this book. It's one of my favorites from my childhood early teenage years and I've never heard anyone talk about Sonia Stones on booktube so I'd be curious if I'm the only one who's read her because I feel like she's fairly popular and there has to be someone else out there who loves her as much as I do. As always thank you so much for watching and commenting. I really love to hear from you guys and I will see you again soon. Bye!